Nehemiah chapter 5. Just look over at your neighbor and say, well, you look really good. Go ahead and tell them. Some of y'all ain't looking at you. Look at your neighbor and say, Woo, man. I don't know what you did, but you did it right. It's good to have Brother Alex Fallon here with us, Pastor of Tennessee. And thankful he's uh, came all the way from Houston to be in church. Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 13. Amen. If you arrived, say amen. amen. Also, I shook my lap and said, so God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise even thus be he shaken out and emptied and all the congregation said amen and praised the Lord and the people did according to this promise amen let's title it tonight all the congregation look at your neighbor and say all the congregation all the congregation Jesus thank you for your word help me to do a good job delivering it in Jesus name and you can be seated. Thank you for standing. If I can a little more monitor, I probably need to hear it more than anybody. The, uh, uh, I believe the highest calling that you could be called to as far as uh, is to be a preacher of the word of the Lord. I don't say that because I am. Matter of fact, I never thought I would be. But uh, I'm thankful for, for preachers and preaching. And... Uh, I, I, each of us can be a witness and testify that preaching has made a difference in our lives. Amen. I'm thankful for the preacher. Uh, of course, while one that preaches the gospel isn't better than the other or loved more by God, it is just God's appointment upon that individual's life to be the one that preaches the gospel. As we see in the selection of David to slay Goliath, when Samuel shows up, he sanctifies every brother. And then he anoints David. While we see there is sanctification on, on everyone, every one of us are to be sanctified, that God does place special anointing on particular individuals to fulfill a, a call in the earth and in their generation. Again, that doesn't mean David was loved more, more valuable in God's eyes. It just means that was his task that he was assigned to. And so it is that we see that when God needs to perform something in the earth, he has linked himself with man, with humanity. Uh, it is the purpose that he created us for in order to fulfill his will on the earth without backup plan. He connected his will to us. Amen. That's why we are to pray. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. That prayer is not just for your benefit. That's for his benefit. Amen. If I do not perform his will for my life in the earth, it will not be done. Come on, there's no one that has a backup plan for the purpose for your life. There is not a, a secondary person that can fulfill what God created you to be. And so we need to recognize that God's plan and purpose is for our lives. And when, when God needed and wanted to make a nation to with, wherewith he would show his greatness in the earth, he picked a man. When he uh, needed to bring him out of Egypt and the bondage and slavery into promise, the Bible says he chose a man. When a giant needed to be killed... Uh, he could have dropped fire from heaven, but he used a man. Uh, when he came to earth, he came as a man. Uh, he gave his keys to the kingdom to a man. He poured out his spirit and it filled each and every man, individuals. Uh, amen. And so it is that God needs us. Look at your neighbor and say, God needs you. God needs you. He needs me. And so I'm thankful that we have a purpose. And while someone says, well, if I don't fulfill it, someone else will. We see in Ezekiel 22 and 30, that that's incorrect. For the Bible says, and I sought for a man among them that should make up a hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. God said, I, I wanted to save them, but I was unable to uh, because I could not find a man. Therefore, I poured out my indignation upon them. Uh, I have consumed them with my fire and wrath. And so God says, because I could not find somebody, they were lost. Let me tell you something, that if you do not do what God has called you to do, if I don't fulfill the purpose that God has for my life, uh, it's not just me, it has an effect upon everything and people around me what we're doing here is more than us just coming together as a congregation of people and, and, and joining forces with like minded politically and theologically sharing similar music styles what we are doing has lasting effects on the eternity of all those that surround us uh, and are connected to us uh, I'm thankful that God uses me Come on, you aren't here just by flipping accident. You didn't just happen to, you know, randomly happen. The, the, the universe spat you out. No, God created you intentionally uh, for a divine purpose. 
And so I believe that the selection, as God uses preachers, uh, uh, and the selection is linked to the availability of the man, the submission of the man, and the, and the talents and the giftings of that individual. I've met people who were available, uh, but they were only available on their terms, unable to be used by God. I met people who were available, and they were submitted. And that enabled their leader to point them in what direction they were to go. Amen. I said if you, submission is allowing God's man to lead you and, and direct you and say, no, your talent isn't preaching in the microphone. Well, my God, I'm calling out. That, then you don't have, if that hurts your feelings, then you've you got to go back to point two. Remember point two. It's submission, amen, and available. Just because you're available, just because you're submitted, doesn't mean your giftings lend itself to your desire. And so then we got a default back to submission and we allow somebody to say, hey, Bo, you ain't good at that. You're not, I, you're not good at that. I remember when I was, I was pastoring, in, in, uh, I was in Fort Wayne, I was a young man. Man, I just loved working for God. And so uh, I was in between jobs. Pastor said, come work at the church. And he made me the head janitor. And I was cleaning. I was good at cleaning. Man, I had that place shining. And uh, then I started, he just had me, basically I was the go for errand boy. Well, uh, the, the administrative pastor at the church, about three, 400 people, he got a better job offer at a bank. And so he took that position. And the uh, pastor said, hey, Matt, you just got an upgrade. You're going to be the administrator. I got a, and I got a pay raise. Man, I was happy. About two months in, he walked in. He said, you're not good at this. <laughs> he said, I, got, I went ahead and called David. And I've offered him whatever the bank was paying him. He'll be back next week. Or after his two weeks are up, he said, and you'll go back to being the janitor. Now, I was young. It hadn't been taught yet that I could get my feelings hurt. So you know what I did? Went back to being the janitor. Because when you was a little kid, they taught you a song in Sunday school. It was called, I'm in the Lord's. I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. I may never preach in the microphone. I may never sing the solo. I may never be tagged on Facebook. I may never be in the recap video. But I'm in the Lord's army. And if you can get that attitude, it'll take you to places you could never imagine. Lord, I'm a... You, in Ezekiel it said I couldn't find nobody but in Isaiah he said I needed somebody and there was this guy that said yes sir he said I picked him I just picked the yes sir man and if you'll say yes sir to the janitor spot I have a come on God has a way of bringing you on into places you could have never imagined never imagined never imagined three years after janitor spot I, I got married and and he said, I want you to be, he heard me, well, yeah, I guess all the five preachers got sick and the three backups couldn't come. So he's like, it was a Wednesday night, he's like, Matt, I need you to preach. I thought, oh my goodness, I've been practicing in my broom handle for three years, I'm ready, baby. This, this broom is anointed of God. That, that and my hairbrush at home. And, uh, and I preached, the Lord moved, and a few months later, he said, I want you to be the youth pastor. There wasn't any money involved. Got married, worked at Lowe's Stock and Shelves, Lincoln Financial during the day. Michelle was worked at the girls' prison, and uh, they, they'd grab her by the hair, tell her they're going to kill her, all kinds of stuff. It's a crazy time in our lives. Uh, but it, we enjoyed it. It was wonderful. God, God is good and amazing. I enjoyed it. She didn't enjoy it, but she didn't enjoy the hair pulling part. But. But it's just, yeah, you know, I was just amazed that I got to, to be a part of the kingdom of God. Let the awe of it all never, never be lost. There's many times I'll, I'll pull my truck or my car out there in front of that church. I'll just sit there, and I'm not much of a crier, but I'll get overwhelmed. And I'll say, man, I could never imagine that I would pastor a church this great. Little old Matthew Tuttle, the janitor. I'm serious that I get to be paid paid well my wife drives a Cadillac I mean who, the janitor's wife's driving a Cadillac things are good man it's a good day who would have ever thought I'm 
blessed, I'm blessed. I, I'm so blessed. I want you all to know that, how much I appreciate you guys. How much I love being your pastor. Michelle loves being your pastor's wife. Thank you for allowing me to be blessed. Thank you for that. I was having lunch with a, uh, a preacher in Indiana camp last week, and he took me out to lunch. He said, you know, it's crazy. He said, this is the only profession where the more successful you are, the people expect you to live less. I said, that ain't my church. <laughs> so that's why I don't live in Indiana. <laughs> Keep your, keep your cheap Indiana people. I'm going down to Texas. They, they're cool with the Cadillac. They're cool with the favor of God. I'm thankful for the blessings of God. Come on. I'm thankful. I'm blessed. Thank you for allowing me to be blessed. Thank you for being blessed. I'm thankful. You, hey, come on. The more blessed I am, that just means you're getting more blessed. <laughs> the only way I get raises is if you get raises. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Give the preacher a raise. That means you just got one. Come on, you want a poor preacher, you're praying a curse on yourself. The only way I can be poor is if you're poor. We're linked. I own 10% of your business. I want your business to do good. I pray over your business to do good. I want you to get bonuses and raises. And, and come on, so when you see me pulling in in a nice car, you'll say, yeah, God's been good to him because God's been good to me. Be good to me, God. Keep being good to me, God. Come on, somebody. I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for it. We celebrate those wins, and I'm thankful for that. However, it's not what defines ministry. You know, America is one of the few places in, in the West where ministry is so extremely blessed, and we've gotten to the place where ministry is, you know, successful ministry is defined by uh, whether or not there's a paycheck tied to it. And that's even slipped in beyond preaching ministry into the pew a little bit. And there's some, you know, if the reason you're not serving is because you're not getting paid, there's a definition in Scripture for that. It's called a hireling. Hireling. The, the King James Version dic Dictionary Bible defines hireling as one who is hired or serves for wages. That's money. And then it gives an example. A mercenary, semicolon, a prostitute. Not me. It's the Bible. John 10 and 10 says, The thief comes not but for to steal, and to kill, to destroy. I'm come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I'm the good shepherd. A good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, that means a preacher for hire, for pay. Come on, somebody. A ministry for pay. The only, the only way I'm going to do it is how much does it pay me? And not... The shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. Come on, when things get tough and the storms blow in and life is not all the fine and dandy and pulpits and padded pews and it's, come on, it's hurricanes and stinky fridges and all that jazz. Uh, come on, the hireling's like, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for all this garbage. Uh, I didn't sign up. Come on, somebody. Ministry cannot be linked successfully to money. Just be, well, my, No, the reason we serve God is because God's good and because it is my purpose in life. The reason we do this, the reason you are serving in ministry is because God has purposed you to do so. I'm thankful for the blessings. I've already stated that. But whether I have blessings or not, whether I have a Cadillac or I come in on a bicycle, we're going to do what God has called us to do. Money's not linked, baby. I've been do I did this as the. I did it, and I had to pay to do this. I didn't always get paychecks. I paid to play. I paid to preach. Use my own money. Raise my own money. Come on, and that's good for you. You don't want a hireling. You don't want somebody that's, that you can buy off with your tithe check. Come on. You don't want, if that's the reason you put your tithe check in there is to control the pulpit, you got the wrong place. It ain't going to happen. No, no, sir. No, sir. We're going to preach the truth. And you've got to have a man that cares more about the truth than anything else. You gotta, your ministry has to be linked to your purpose, not the paycheck, or you are prostituting it. I didn't come to buy her for the money I, I, or I'll be controlled by it. You don't want a pre preacher controlled. You don't want a minister controlled by money. Come on. 
That's why you give your money and it, well, I don't know what they're doing with the money. Why does it matter to you? Come on, somebody. Well, what's he, if, if I'm doing it wrong, God whoops me up. But you don't want to touch God's money. I'll say that again. You don't want to touch it. Let him take care of me. There's twice the, the judgment's twice as strong on me as it is y'all. Just so you know that. I, got to, I read those scriptures. I know. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. So you got to be careful. As soon as you get money in the ministry, it just gets dangerous. Let me ask you something. How many of you are working a job right now? Anybody working a job? Good. Thank you all for working. I appreciate that. How many feel like you, need, you deserve a raise? Yeah. You feel like, yeah. How many of you would like a raise? Just feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm worth it. Now, if, if your boss came in tomorrow and said, hey, I'm going to give you a raise, you'd be like, you know what? You pay me too much. <laughs> Y'all all laughing. Because every single one of you think you're worth more than you really are. Me included. The minute you introduce money, you enter into a spirit of dissatisfaction. The minute you say, well, what am I going to get paid for cleaning the carpet? And I put value to that with monetary value, it instantly is not enough. It's not enough. Now, before you got paid, let me tell you the best way to destroy a great church volunteer, give them money. Because before you got money, you got happiness. And let me tell you, the joy you get from serving without money is much greater than any dollar amount you could ever put on it. And until you find that joy, oh, you'll, the first two weeks of the, of the pay, you're like, man, I'm getting paid to work at the church. Two months later, I need a raise. I promise you. So I'm, I don't know why I'm talking. I'm just sharing something. This has been on my spirit. To, that, and maybe I'm talking to young ministries. But there's just something when you put monetary value on a human being's time, they never feel like it's enough. And so now you have a situation where the church or God is not being fair to you. That's a, that's a dangerous place to be in. And that's a place why God doesn't, doesn't put some monetary on some of your ministry. And so you guys say, I'm not doing this for anyone else or anything else. You say, oh, preacher, that's not true. No, it is true. LeBron James doesn't think he makes enough money. And he plays a stupid game. Come on. I mean, I have to battle it. I ain't going to lie. I feel like I'm worth more. Nice Cadillac should be a Bentley for all I do around this place. My God, I got to take phone calls at 2 o'clock in the morning here about your kit, kitten having kittens. And, you know, I, God, I'm, I, I, come on, I can justify. So you know what I do every day? I get down on my knees. I say, God, I am so blessed that I get to serve you, that you would die for. I, I, pro, I don't do this. To, I'm, not, I'm just teaching you how to, st how to stay thankful. God, thank you so much that I get to serve you, that I get to, you, and, and occasionally that dissatisfaction comes in, and I have to come into this house into this building I'll just walk around and I'll just say wow God man you're good to me that's why it's important to come to the church house to see the goodness of God and how blessed we are there's not one dollar that he could give you come on if he gave you all the money in the world come on it wouldn't compare to the joy that he gave you my fulfillment in life and ministry is not connected to money the love of money is the root of all evil Who's that? Who did he write that to? To very, 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 very mature Christians. Church leadership. He wrote it to church leader. It's Wednesday night Bible study. Church leadership was told that the love of not the sinner. Come on. And then he continues on. He says, and godliness and contentment is great gain. He said, you're going to find out, son, that living a godly life is what brings contentment to your life. For the love of, see what happens is God gets the alcohol out, he gets the drugs out, he gets the, come on, he gets the anger out and the bitterness out and he gets you free from all that jazz and gets you off porn and gets you living right. Now, he gets a spirit of dissatisfaction. That's how the enemy comes up against you then is you don't battle drugs, you don't battle alcohol, you just battle a sense of dissatisfaction. Well, they don't appreciate my value. 
I just am not appreciated enough around there. That's a spirit of dissatisfaction. When you were addicted to crack cocaine and walked in, you didn't have none of that. You said, this is the greatest place that God ever made. I, he set me free. He set me. Don't ever lose the wonder. Don't ever lose the awe that you get to be on the, hey, if you're on the praise team, Never ever lose the wonder that you get to open that door, step onto a platform, hold a microphone and lead the people of God in worship. Never. If you play a keyboard, if you get on these drums or sing in that choir, it's not mundane. It's not some, oh, they're, I'm worth more. I should be getting paid. You get to sing in the choir. You get to lift God up. We get to be a part. Oh God, thank you God. I get to clean. Thank you God. I get to mow. Thank you God. I get to serve and my God, can I get a witness of a volunteer walking away uh, covered in sweat, 145 degrees on your head, uh, covered in dust because you've been out blowing a parking lot, but you never felt better in all your life. Uh, that's what living is. Uh, that's what living is. Something about it. I deserve hell. That's what I earn. Come on, somebody. But I'm thankful that, it, that I'm not lost. I'm thankful for preachers in this world. You can't be saved without a preacher. He said, I can't be saved. How shall, Romans 10 and 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You gotta have a preacher. You got to have a preacher. See, there's an attack on against preachers in this world. Come on. They make too much money. Blah, blah. You know, and, and there, are some, there are some dirty ones. There's some idiots. And it's embarrassing. And I'm so, I apologize for them. They're morons. Okay? I'm going to tell you what. There's some idiot doctors. I'm going to tell you something else. My father-in-law went to Denny's once. Got a salad. Bit down on a screw. I'd say that's an idiot cook. You know what's funny? Still goes to Denny's. Still goes to restaurants. My God, I got a screw back in 1983 in my salad. I'm never going back to a restaurant. You'll die. Man, one time I had a hair in my food. I'm never eating food again. Well, you go show them, bud. You do that. Yeah. You just prove them right. You go ahead. That'll work out real fine and dandy for you. Man, I had one hair, but I've had a hundred thousand great meals without any hair. I've been to Denny's and had that French slam ten thousand times. That French toast, eggs, bacon. I never had screw in it. It's been great to me. I love it. Come on, brother Tim. Me and you, Denny's people, baby. Yeah. Hey, just because somebody in Ohio or Houston had a bad experience at the IHOP doesn't mean I'm stopping. And for every bad experience, I've had 10,000 services where I came in and lifted my hands and the wave of his glory swept over my family. And for every stupid preacher, there's been a thousand that came by and spoke a word into my life. And for every moron preacher, there's been someone that came and visited me in a hospital room and picked me up. And for every saint that was a hypocrite, there were 10,000 that helped me buy my groceries and brought me to church. So, so don't lump us all in with that. And don't give up on God because somebody was stupid. Keep living for God. Keep doing what's right. Thank God for a preacher. How many of you remember, how many of you got the Holy Ghost after preaching? Somebody was preaching to you. You all keep your hand up. Look around. Somebody try to tell you you don't need a preacher. The only reason you got the Holy Ghost is because somebody preached about it to you. And now the devil trying to turn you against God's man, turn you against God's spirit. Come on, the devil is a liar. How many remember who it was preaching? Keep your hand up, that's pretty cool. How many remember what they preached? A little few less. Woo! It's pretty awesome. Y'all just give God a praise. God sent a man. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for preaching. I told you about the other Sunday about some places I've stayed where things weren't so fine. And, uh, and hey, and I'll preach. I've done it. We, like I said, right, we've stayed rats in the walls. You could hear them, and all that jazz. 
I don't know if it sounds like that. But. <laughs> I want to say this. That ain't ever going to happen here. It might, it might be okay over in the country of Louisiana, the third world nation. You know what I mean? You go from Uganda to Louisiana and you feel like you can come on, you're downgraded. That's where Brother Grimm goes to practice his, his African missions. He, I'm just kidding. I'm not really though. Those roads over there, they're horrible. I love all, I got to pick on the Louisiana people. Man, we love y'all's food. That's the truth. Y'all can cook. We give you that. <clears throat> Only y'all could have thought of throwing the things in the pot. Y'all throw in the pot, though. <laughs> God almighty. That's how bad it is. <laughs> we ain't going to treat them like that here. We put them in the nicest hotel that we can afford. We don't bring them in if we can't pay them well. It's the way it ought to be. Because we want to honor God's man. When they come in, they've got a parking spot. Let's keep it for them. Amen. Want it to be that way. It's important. So, well, this is old. It's old school, but it works. It's, it goes all the way back into the Old Testament. It goes way, way back. Taking care of God's man works out good for us. So we're just going to keep doing that, all right? Elisha passed by in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8. There was a, he's in Shunem, and there's this great woman. The Bible says she stopped and said, hey, eat some bread. And it was that as often as he passed by, he turned thither to eat bread. It means every time, it's old English, he said every time he was around close enough, he'd stop by her house to eat. Why do you think? She's a good cook. There you go. Throw it out there for you. She was a good cook. She did her, she, that means she served up her best. It wasn't ramen noodles, Brother Jacob. It was legit food. And then she got ambitious and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a, a room for him. I'm going to have a comfortable place for him. If you can, you can read it, the Bible says that, that, that he would come by and he had his own room. A, a, she was hospitable to God's man. And because she was hospitable to God's man, he would stop by. And the Bible says one day he's laying there, he asked his servant, he said, what is it, what's up with this chick? What's she need? The servant says, Man, she, she can't have kids. He says, call her. She came in, knocked. He, he says, hey, by this time next year, you'll have a child. She said, don't lie to me. That's what she said. He said, I'm telling you, you're going to have a child. Guess what happened? A year later, she had a child. Child dies. Man of God raises him up. Why? Because she cooked him a meal and gave him a place to stay. I'll tell you something about it. That's why we honor God's man. I know it's old-fashioned, but we honor God's man. We honor God's man. We honor him. We honor him. It's good to honor him. We have a guest speaker. He sits. That's why they sit on the platform. I know it's old-fashioned, and, and they're trying to throw us off the platform. We're not going to do that here. So, well, I don't know. No, your kids need someone to look up to. If they're not looking up to the preacher... They're looking up to somebody. I'm going to tell you, it's not something that's like, yay, I want to do or be. It's something that God called the preacher to be. A man that, that our kids can look up to as an example. I want my son to look up to preachers. I go places and after I'm done preaching, man, they'll line up. I'll, I'll sign autographed Bibles. And I used to not do it. It was like, ah. And I was walking away. I said, no, son, I don't do that. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, Someone's going to sign something that he hands them. He said, it's either going to be a whoremonger, it's going to be somebody living wrong, or it's going to be you. He said, it's false humility. He says, a humble man will stand here knowing what all these other people are thinking about him. Oh, he's up there thinking he's a big shot. No, he's not. He's thinking this little boy needs a hero. And you know what? I will, I'll be in. I'll be the hero. Let me tell you, raise your sons. Raise your daughters. Don't speak ill of the man of God at home. Don't do it. There's garbage going on on social media about a preacher. Don't you share it. Don't you talk about it. Just do not. The Bible says don't publish negativity about things that happen in the church in Gath. Don't spread it amongst Philistines. It's a sin. It's wrong. You deal with it internally. If we have issues, we deal with that. You go to your brother in private, the Bible says. 
Then if it doesn't work that way, you get the church board. If it doesn't work that way, we go to, a, to in front of the church. We'll take care of it. Amen? Amen? Come on. I've said that before. Worst thing you could do is put a fear for a doctor in your child. When his arm's blown off, you ain't going to want to go to the doctor. Don't put a fear for God's man in your children. Put a respect, but not fearful of them. It's good for us. That's, and, and so we've constructed, we've created a place where, where men of God, they love to come. I'm thankful. I've got a picture of Brother Holmes. He preached for us a while back on a Sunday. And he asked me, he said, can I come in Friday? So he came in Friday. I don't know if he got the picture or not, but they said, can I come in Friday? That's him in our church. He came in on Friday night so that he could spend all day Saturday. He spent all, guy pastors, 4,000 people. Some of us can't get here, but he did. And he got here all day, prayed all day Saturday, got up Monday, preached Sunday morning, preached for Sunday night. We got in here Monday at 9, prayed to noon, and drove home. I'm going to tell you what, why. He said, Matt, I just love praying in your church. He said, there's something wonderful about the atmosphere and the climate of your church because we've constructed. I love it that this is a place where men of God, they want to come. They want to preach. I'm going to tell you, they want to preach here. They, every, every week I get a text or a call. Can I come? Can I come? Sometimes two or three. Can I come? Can I? When I'm, I invited somebody the other day to come, uh, and uh, he, uh, his wife told somebody, he told me, he said, man, he, he didn't sleep all night. He did not come. He's not coming for a few months, but he didn't sleep all night. He's so excited he gets to preach at Eastgate Church. Isn't that exciting? That's a compliment. Isn't that awesome? And that's good for them, but you know what? It's good for us. Come on, it, when you create an atmosphere where God's man says, man, they're good cooking right over there. I won't stop by. It works out good when you're sick and the man that has the gift of healing walks in. It works out good if you're needing direction and the man with a word of knowledge comes by. It works out good for us. It works out good for Pastor Tuttle when I'm weary and he comes in and preaches strength into my family. When my boy gets another hero, I'm thankful for God's man. Thankful for preachers, but I got to tell you, without the congregation, it's of no value. We got to explain a little bit how this thing works. See, preaching is more than just vocal. It's 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 like what's happening in the spirit is is it it is it is a pulling forth, and and when the miraculous starts happening, when the preacher starts preaching and pulling, I've preached this out of Acts three, real quick. Acts three, just throw up verse seven. Can you get a mic, Josh, and help me read? My, I'm not going to be much longer, maybe. And he took him by the right hand. You know the story, lame man, can't walk, never has walked. Uh, the Bible says the preacher came by, took him by the hand and lifted him up. Look at your neighbor and say, he pulled him up. Okay, that's what preaching is. Preaching, uh, in a way, uh, is, is, is delivering a word with his mouth, but in the spirit there is a pulling uh, that takes place. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling, uh, pulling down of strongholds. Oh, preacher, I don't like it when you pull on me. Let's go to Jude 23. And others saved with fear. Anybody know the rest of it? I'm, there it is. What was it? And others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Let me tell you what preaching is. Preaching is. You say you pull. I don't like it when you pull, baby. If you could see what's at the bottom of your feet, you would say pull harder. Oh, Pastor, you hurt little Johnny's foo foo feelings. Well, foo foo's feelings were going to. Was, I was trying to save him from his feet that were catching on fire. That's why I pulled. I, I pull on, preacher. Pull. Pull on. Pull me up out of the gate. Pull me up out of my sickness. Pull me out of my depression. Pull me out of hell. Pull me out of carnality. Pull me out of shame. Pull me out of drug addiction. It, has a preacher ever pulled you out? I said, has a preacher ever pulled you out? Did you ever come low, but your faith was pulled up? Did you ever come living in sin, but you were pulled up into, come on, holiness. Thank God for preaching that pulls me up. Psalms 44, 5, through thee will we push down our enemies. So there's pulling and there's pushing. And I saw this somewhere, but... That's how you get something unstuck. Get, hand me that microphone thing there. Microphone standy. There you go. Take the microphones off. They're like, I think they're more than $2. You got them at five below, I think. Here we go. All right, here we go. All right. All right. Come here, Jacob. Come here. Come here, uh, Josh. 
All right. Now, now just imagine this is a post that's stuck deep in the ground. You got to use your imagination. All right. I'll give you a minute to get your imagination started. Okay. There you go. All right. Okay. It's stuck in the ground. I want you to pull it up. Just pull it straight up. Okay. Now, look. When you got a post or a pole stuck, you pull straight up. It's not always going to work. There is a way, though, that you can get it. Kind of like your tooth. What do you do? What do you do, Brother Rose? Come on, Brother Rose, I see you. Come on, come on, come on. Show us how to do it, Brother. Professional pole puller, master, shouter, and dancer. How do you do it? Yeah, okay, okay. Oh, now I see it. You got to push and pull. And when you push and pull and push and pull, guess what happens? All of a sudden, something comes loose. Oh, preacher, I need you to stop pulling and pushing. But when we start pulling, when we start pushing, things begin to happen. And if we don't push and we don't pull, things don't get unstuck. Okay? Things don't get unstuck. And so we have to realize that the preacher, he's pulling. Up. Somebody's got put. I did the pulling. Ever heard the term, come on somebody. That's you doing the pushing. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God can set you free. God can set, deliver you from nicotine. God can get you out of the hell hole you're in. Oh, the congregation said amen. Now, Passover, when I say main player, you think Moses, right? Exodus 12 and 3. You got your reader, reader mic? Read it fast because I've only got 12 minutes. Nah. Speak ye unto all the congregation Ooh, of Israel. Speak ye unto who? Passover was about who? Look at your neighbor and say, that's you, baby. All the congregation, verse 6, for the sake of time. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole and Moses assembly. And the preacher. No, no, no. Who? The and the whole assembly. Who, get, who has to kill? Who's involved? Who gets to be a spectator? Who gets to just come and watch? Who gets to come chill? Who rides the Holy Ghost gravy train? Nobody. If you're going to be part of the Passover, everybody's got to get in on it. Now, the term all the congregation is used 73 times in the Bible. 23 of them are commandments to them. That means there's 23 direct commandments to the whole body. It's in Chronicles 5 and 6. Also, King Solomon and... Keep reading, Brother Josh Reader. And congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him before the ark sacrificed. Who sacrificed? Sheep. Who was oh preaching he sacrificed and he's driving blah, 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 blah. No, no, they all sacrificed. Okay? Whew. Let's keep going. Second Chronicles 29, 26. Good. Good. You with read the, it? With Real the instruments fast. of David and the priest with the trumpets. Keep going fast. And Hezekiah commanded to offer the burnt offerings upon the altar. And when they burnt offerings began, the song of the Lord began also with the trumpets and with the instruments ordained by David, king of Israel. Let's read this one together. And all... Stop. Who didn't get to worship? All the congregation worshipped and all the singers sang... Was it, this isn't what, how it went down. The singers up here singing while the congregation was watching. It's not how it went down. Here's how it went down. The singers did the singing and the congregation did the, all the congregation did the. Come on, somebody. I said, oh, and the trumpeters and the music played music. And this continued until the offering was finished. The singer sang, the worshiper worshiped, and everybody worships. Everybody worships. 
2 Chronicles 28 and 14. Here's some of the results when all the congregation gets involved. Guess what happens? Go, 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 bro. So, so the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the congregation. Who, who gets the spoil? If you'll help with the worship and if you'll help with the preaching, you also get the spoils of it. You get to go home with joy. You know what spoils are? Spoils are things that aren't yours. You didn't really even have to do much to get them. All you did was come to church and worship. You stood up in your pew, clapped your hands and said amen. And you went home with gold in your pocket. You went home with a bag full of blessing. You went... Well, I went to church. I went to church and I didn't get nothing. The spoils are there. All you did, you didn't complain about me preaching or them singing. You just said I didn't participate. You just hated on yourself. You just dogged your own self out when you went home. I didn't get nothing. It's because you didn't give nothing. You didn't get in. Because if you get in, his word can't lie. If you get in and worship, all the congregation gets the spoils. All the congregation gets the, oh, I wish I had somebody that would just say, give me some of that gold. Give me some of that blessing. Give me some of that anointing. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. I got tons of notes, Josh, but let's just go six and five. Josh was six and five for the famous one. I got lots more, but we, we're almost there. Six and five, we're just waiting. It's about the walls of Jericho. I sped up. I gave them my notes, and they're having to find it. There it is. Go. Uh, and it cut, shall hey, come to welcome. pass. I just cut a bunch out. Give God praise. Give, go ahead. You know you want to. I skipped through six pages. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you, hear, when you hear the sound of the trumpet ooh, and all ooh, the people ooh, 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 ooh. all of the new converts no. all of the people that have only been in church for five years or less no all of the young people all of the skinny people all of the less skinny people Just going to get that right because sometimes I wonder, not in this church. I'm preaching this message for all the other churches that watch this online and I have to go preach at and it's like pulling teeth to preach. So thank you all for letting me kind of just teach the whole UPC, the whole thing right now. I got to get it out there. Come on, somebody. It, it's disgusting. We're blessed how blessed we are. The reason they want to preach here is because this is a pulling and a pushing church. That's why. Who all had to shout? All the people had to shout. Everybody had to shout. Everybody said, had to say amen. amen. Come on. Amen. That's good. Good, good. Hey, we all pray together. Y'all didn't know I was a church scientist. Let's do a little science experiment. You can be seated for a minute. I mean, good Lord, I got seven minutes. Might as well use them. That's like the mints of Papados. I don't need them, but I take them. You know? I can stop right now, but I got it. It's like three minutes. Y'all laughing because you do it too. You know, you got them all up in your cup holder and you, you open up, your, you come on their 6,700 napkins. You know, you open up, you, I didn't need them. I just got them. They were free, you know. <laughs> We're going to pray, and we're going to pray Jesus and say the name of Jesus in our minds. Y'all ready? Close your eyes. Say it in your mind. Boy, ain't this a powerful prayer meeting. <laughs> now, um, I want about three of you to start saying Jesus. Just three. Hold on. Let me do the assignments. Brother Rodney, you can say Jesus. Brother David, you'll say Jesus. Sister Shree. And the rest of y'all just talk about the weather with each other. Just talk about, have a nice conversation. Things are going on.
Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost mighty strong right now. My visitor that came in that has cancer, faith is high right now. My drug addict neighbor that I've been begging to come finally came after three years. Boy, they're excited about you talking to your buddy about the weather during prayer meeting. They're loving it. Boy, it's making a difference in their life. They always wanted to know what the weather was, so they didn't buy a phone that had it on it. They came to church because they heard that this is a place where we are all the congregation lifts their voice. Now, let's do this. Let's all, if you, for the sake, this ain't me being mean, this is for science. Bill Nye, all right? This is for science. So if you can't participate in this current next next science experiment, I'm going to have to respectfully ask you just to step outside in the hall. You can come right back in after science experiment because something's going to explode and you're going to get hurt. So look at your neighbor and say, you have to ask your neighbor, are you going to participate for the sake of science? Okay, I just want you to begin to open your mouth and start saying, Jesus, I thank you. I worship you. Loud. One, two, three, go. Well, hey, man, so what are you doing today? Like, how's it going? Things going good? Yeah. Hey, bro, nice tie. You really look good. It's distracting. You shouldn't be talking about your tie. Shouldn't be talking about your dress. Shouldn't be talking. When you come into this house, your sinner friend deserves prayer time. Somebody shout, Jesus. I can feel the Holy Ghost now. Sunday night, when we come in here to pray... We ain't coming in to look at each other. Monday night, you guys go hang out at Papa Do's. Go down to Whataburger. Talk about all that jazz somewhere else. Go in the hall for Pete's sake. But people are coming into the, this is the ER. This right here is the emergency room. This right here is where we do open heart surgeries and eternities are altered. Here's where we take care of cancer. Here's where we deal with divorce. Here's where we deal with depression. Here we're dealing with anxiety. Back there we're dealing with confusion. Back there we're dealing with teen suicide. Over there we're dealing with all kinds of jazz and we don't have the time to have you talking about things that are in it. Come on. So if you're going to be in the room, you got to be a nurse and the nurse is over there saying, Jesus, set them free. Jesus and the doctor, come on, through the shepherd is going to administer the oil and the church is going to pray and while they yet were praying the Holy Ghost fell it is God's will that we don't kick off services with somebody saying church starts now no when we get together we're two or three are gathered together in my name the minute we get in this room church started You can be wrong somewhere else. Because here, this is how we do it. Because, oh boy, oh boy, stuck up in his fear and depression, comes into the church first time, it's your friend. You need to have church every service like your mom has cancer and is in the building. Because Sunday morning when we had 554 people there were people in here for the very first time and some of those people had needs that were really bad every time we get together there's someone in this room that has a life altering eternity altering need we don't have time to play around you got, we got to be in unity and oh boy he is stuck in his depression stuck he been told nothing can get him out He's been told nothing can set him free. He's been pulled up and been trying to pull, but, but, it, but then he came into the house. Come on over here, preach, preach. And the preacher said, God can set you free. And the congregation said, and you can be delivered. You can be, you don't have to live in your depression. You don't have to live in your shame. Looks to me like he's getting loose. Wow, he just got up. Look at him run. Look at him shout. Look at him. Come on. 
come on somebody it didn't happen because Pastor Tuttle's some genius preacher it happened because we got to push it and a pulling and a push it and a pulling and a push it and a pulling and it changes people's lives I don't think it matters I'm going to close with Joshua 7 I wouldn't do it if this Sunday I'd close right here but we got this Bible study 7-1 but the children of Israel committed trespass. So we just did the, all the congregation has to shout. Remember that and what happened? Walls fall down. What were they supposed to do with the gold, the silver, the raiment that was in the city of Jericho? That was their tithing. It was the first, first city in promised land went to God's house. All the gold, all the silver and everything went to God's house, right? But the children of Israel committed trespass. In the accursed thing for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabai, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Look at your neighbor and just say, one dude didn't do it. Well, the good for him, God made God strike him dead. He deserves everything come to him. Verse 4. So there went up thither the people, about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. So after Jericho, they go to fight this battle of Ai. Just a, not a big fight. Should have easily won it. Next one. And the men of Ai smote them. 30 and 6 men of God died. They died. You know why they died? Because Achan robbed God. Come on. And so because Achan robbed God, 36, let's go, let's read, let's read. For, y'all looking at me like I'm not telling the truth. And verse 6, so here's what happens. Uh, verse 6, read it for me, brother reader, and go fast. I'll conclude here. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the even tide. He and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. Keep going. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, Wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. People regretting they'd even went to church. Come on, somebody. I don't even know why I went. Go ahead. Keep reading. Go fast. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? What am I going to say? Everything I've been preaching, the preacher's going, Pray God, I told him we were going to be victorious. I, I said in the mic that you could be delivered and healed. And people are dying. And the preacher's beating him on. I must have not preached it right. What did I miss in study? Maybe I didn't do it. And he's beating him himself up about the sermon he had preached when it was not him. Let me tell you. There's a responsibility that comes with sitting in that pew. I spent the first 20 minutes talking about the responsibility of the pulpit. Tonight I'm teaching on the responsibility of the pew. Let me tell you something. I'm watching these modern churches. All that's lit up is a stage. And it's one giant concert, and I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just saying that's not right. I go to them, and they want me to preach, and I can't even see the crowd. I told y'all one time I had him turn the lights on. Dude sitting out there eating popcorn. I'm not even kidding. By the time sitting out there eating popcorn, looking at him with his arm wrapped around his girlfriend. I said, you're the reason we can't break the stronghold in this church service. Here I am preaching to a dark room with 5,000 people in it, beating myself up because there's nothing. I can feel just, I'm not, I'm pulling, I'm pulling, I'm pulling, and, and nothing's happened in the first night. And I'm pulling, nothing's happened the next night. I finally said, turn the lights on. Oh, wow, the people aren't doing anything. That's where God gave me this revelation. That, ladies and gentlemen, it's the victory for your friends, yourself, our city is not just my responsibility. Take the responsibility of the pew. It's us working together, baby. We in this together. All the congregation said. I said all the congregation. So when the preacher comes, if he's, you can stand. If he's good, he says something real revelatory, and you're like, woo, say Amen. Run the eyes. But you know when you ought to say amen a little louder and run a little faster? When he's a beginner and the mic's shaking and you already know everything he's saying.
I went somewhere and they, I was getting ready to come on the platform. I said, boy, this place is tough. You got to bring it if you're going you to get them with you here. Something angry got in me. It was the Holy Ghost. That's not how we're going to be. Well, they're spoiled with great preacher. Let me tell you, we are all great preachers. What this dude says, whether he's 15 years old, if he's up here and he says God's good, I'm going to be over there pulling with him. He, don't, he does not. It's not the duty. The duty of this man is not to impress you. Man, I never thought of it that way. Who cares? The question is, did a sinner get saved? The question is, do we get something loose in the Holy Ghost? Who cares? Man, that really made me feel good. My qu the question is, it doesn't make you feel good. The question is, did it make the devil feel bad? And you know what? Every time we say there's one God, it makes the devil feel bad. Every time we say Jesus, it makes the devil feel bad. Every time we say hallelujah, it makes the devil feel bad. Every time we say God is good and the devil ain't, it makes it. So if it's making him feel bad, I'm going to pull with you. I'm just going to run on it. The devil is a loser. I'm going to shout. On the, come on. I've got the victory. I'm going to shout on hero Israel. Though I've heard that my whole life. Yeah, I've been running the aisles to it my whole life. I've been stomping on the devil's head, singing that fast. Can't stop praying in him song my whole life because it ain't so much about the song or the revelation it's about having victory and getting my family unstuck getting my mind out of the mud getting my home oh, come on out of the trouble getting my friend and my neighbor out of the pit of sin into the hope of heaven that's what it's about that's what it's about that's what I love about this church Man, I've never had to beg you to come. You know, some places I go, I say, would you come to the altar? No one comes. There's places. Am I right, brother? Better not be your place. I ain't coming. I'm, I'm preaching for him in 2024, 2023. And I'm glad you're here. Now you know what to expect. You go ahead and take this video on back. Say, Bo, you guys, are gonna, brother Tuttle ain't going to mess around. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah something will begin to shake in this atmosphere and lives will begin to be changed because when we say let's respond <laughs> I love it Eastgate we don't typically even have to make an altar call would y'all please come to the front I just made it just to make it just because since we never make it you know just to make it come on up to the front right now hey you feel that Holy Ghost start drawing you you feel something start drawing you. Matter of fact, you don't feel it drawing. You're like, you're looking up at that preacher saying, he's struggling. One time after church, I went and got in the car. I sit next to Bishop. Man, Bishop was clapping and shouting and getting with the preacher. And I mean, he always gets with the preacher, but he was like really getting with the preacher. I told Michelle, I said, man, Bishop really was preaching with that dude. She said, yeah, he was struggling. And I felt so bad with the meeting. Because I sat there thinking, He's struggling. You ever thought that? Hope you're not thinking it right now. <laughs> if I'm struggling, don't sit there and say, man, he's struggling. Unstruggle me. Make your neighbor think, what, what on earth did he say that was that good? It was, man, I got it. Maybe it was that good. I'm going to go ahead and just say amen. Just... And all of a sudden, whether it's good or not, when you start clapping, you get anointed as just as anointed as I do. When you come where two or three get into an agreement, an anointing falls in that spirit of agreement. And whether it's good, new, just as long as it's true, the Holy Ghost starts breaking change in your family. Break, your neighbor starts feeling something they've never. I wonder if you could just get your neighbor's hand. Say, agree with me for victory. Look at your neighbor say, agree with me for victory. Well, what do I need victory for? Or whatever it is you need victory for just agree with them agree for victory in Biter agree for victory in the Holy Ghost agree for victory come on I feel the Holy Ghost ha, 
Why? God is pulling us out. He, something's pulling and something's pushing and something's moving because the congregation is involved. I'm thankful, Father, for these great people. I pray that you would give that which they have spoken out of their mouth where the two or three agree as touching anything. You said it would be done. Let it be done now, Lord. I thank you that I get to pastor the most wonderful people. Open the windows of heaven over them. Thank you, Lord, that they work with me. Thank you that we're co-laborers. Me, your people, you and us, we work together and we're gonna change our city, our world. Oh, come on, if you need a miracle right where you're at, don't let go of your neighbor's hand. You just begin to declare it in your body, your family. Over Joe Emanuel, we declare healing in that knee. Let the infection be gone. Come on, Stephen Hawkins, there's agreement. We're gonna pull, we're gonna push. We're gonna pull until we get you up out of that. Come on, oh gosh, Come on, Becky Tarzan. Come on, Brother Hirosaki. We're gonna push, we're gonna pull. We're gonna push, we're gonna pull. We're gonna work you out, out of that mess. We're gonna keep praying, we're gonna keep petitioning because we believe in God, the power of the word. We're thankful for the messenger. We accept the responsibility of the pew. And we give you praise. In the matchless name. In the matchless name. In the only saving name. In the holiest name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Ooh, right where you're at, your eyes closed. God will fill you a little bit with the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody just need a little... Come on, top it off. Let it stream a little bit right there on a Wednesday night. I know it's a little late. It's only 8. Come on, it's 8.29. We haven't even hit 8.30. Just right where you are. Come on. There's something. Preacher, you didn't say anything fancy. There wasn't really a cool illustration. You just got up there. But I got in agreement. And it changed. I can't remember what he preached. I just remember I agreed. I can't say he was experienced. He was 22. But he came and preached and I agreed and it changed my life. He was 85 on his last leg of life but he came and he got anointed and I agreed and it changed my family. I, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the preaching. Thank you for the singing. And Father, I thank you for all the congregation that I get to pastor. I thank you, Koro, my son. We get to do this together. Don't leave us. Remain, remain close. Very present. Strong. We want to accomplish what you have for us. Is that your prayer here tonight, Eastgate Church? We want to accomplish and fulfill what God has for us. If that's your desire, why don't we just put our hands together. Magnify the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.